choosing the right tech stack feels like picking tools out of a, a messy, cluttered toolbox, right? So many options, and uh, most of them you don't even need at the end of the day, right? So I've been through this journey in the past four or five years building software for companies and for my own tech startups, and I'll play it down for you. By the end of this video, you will know exactly what I use for all of my projects, even the ones that I use to close seven-figure projects that I, that I built. Regardless if you're building a small tech hustle with your own micro SaaS or whatever it is, I believe this tech stack will be able to help you in your journey if you're building in tech. So let's start with the obvious ones, which is React. Why React? I know you've heard it a thousand times. People always say React um, instead of Vue.js, but for me, yeah, there is a reason why it is everywhere because React is really like a Swiss Army knife. You know, look at it, Facebook, Instagram, Airbnb, they all use React to build interactive and scalable UIs. When I'm building out a software or a platform that I know will build, I don't want to be switching frameworks later down the line, right? Because I know that it's going to be able to handle whatever I throw at it. And the best part though with React is that I'm going to be able to use React Native very easily to just convert it into a mobile app if I want to down the line. Right. Imagine if I build an app with Vue.js and I want to build a mobile app, I probably need to rebuild everything from scratch in React or in uh, Flutter, right? Even the Vue native framework actually runs in React native on the back end, right? So I'm like, yeah, it just, just kind of too much sense to, to, to go with React and, and not with anything else. Yeah, so just imagine this one code base, you're able to build iOS and Android apps. That's why I, I would choose React now. Right. Next would be Next.js, right? If you need some form of um, server-side rendering or in, in other terms, if you need SEO, if your platform is something that requires SEO that you're very customer-facing, B2C-facing, then I would suggest um, Next.js, right? For the server-side rendering, for the site generation, out-of-box optimizations that are meant for server-side and SEO loading. The beauty of Next.js is that you don't need to worry so much about the performance, right? Next helps you handle it. That's why companies like Twitch, they use it to ensure that their pages load really fast and not worry about how many users are on it. Even if it's millions of users, they'll be fine with it. With one of my projects, page load times were critical because our users were bouncing if it took longer than a few seconds to load. So Next.js really helped us cut down the time it takes to load these pages. And also, obviously, rank on Google because that's, that's so important, right? Then the next thing I will use will be Daisy UI. It's one of the newer UI frameworks now. I used to use Tailwind DSS. So Daisy is basically a framework on top of Tailwind. Yep, so with Daisy UI, you are able to avoid a lot of the CSS headache that you will face as a developer. I know a lot of developers don't enjoy doing a lot of uh, design. So Daisy UI has this very nice modern look your website because they have these pre-built components that you can just plug and play really quickly and it saves so much time so many hours in terms of building it helps us ship so much faster right i get this modern design without even thinking about it uh whether i'm throwing together a dashboard or a user profile page whatever it is right daisy ui just helps me speed things up so quickly so think about companies like notion they don't need to reinvent your design every time and neither should you just stick to this something like daisy ui and just move on from there because it's so beautiful and so fast. So let's let's take for the front end. I can talk a little bit about the back end now. So the back end needs to be fast and simple. I like something that allows me to ship really quickly. And that's why I stick to ExpressJS because I'm already using JavaScript. I just want to stick to one language. I don't want to be moving around different languages, right? So it's bare bones, but it's highly efficient. Whether I'm building a small API or something larger, ExpressJS lets me scale that really quickly and move really quickly as well, right? Think about companies like Uber, for example. They use Express for their core services, right? Imagine such a big company with millions of users every single day, every single minute they have a request, they're able to scale it with ExpressJS, right? So if they can, I believe you can. And it's easy to use, easy to learn, easy to maintain as well. So when I built my job automation tool called Jobier, right? That's my job automation tool. I didn't want to waste time with heavy frameworks, so I just, just really stick to Express most of the time. We have so many boilerplate code and, and templates that are already built in. So I just, you know, you know, every time I launch a new project, it doesn't take me much time because it's all built in before already. So the next thing I use is Hasura. So this is my favorite tool that I've been using for the past four years. And uh, it's crazy because you've got your database and your schema and all you need now is an API to pull the data fast, right? That's where Hasura comes in and helps you do that. So Hasura, it automatically helps you generate all your routes right? All your GraphQL APIs, everything is automated. All you gotta do is define your schema. So don't, no need for three months to define every, all of your APIs. This is created for you automatically, right? Don't need to manually code the endpoints. I use Hasura on so many of my projects today, and it even helps me do handle user interactions in real time. So it handles all the load without breaking a sweat, and it's used by companies like Notion, in fact, to streamline their API management. So next thing would be Superbase. So um, Superbase is my favorite choice for databases, especially when I need real-time updates or user authentication, right? Superbase is basically an open source Firebase alternative, but with the power of Postgres under the hood. So I've used it to manage everything from my smaller fun projects to larger ones that handle thousands of concurrent users. And here's the kicker. I don't have to manage the infrastructure because everything's managed for me. So I can just focus on building. 
right? You know, the, the famous coding app, Code Academy. Code Academy uses a similar setup for uh, managing their learning platform. So if it's good enough for them, it's probably good enough for you. Next would be cloud and uh, monitoring. So for cloud, I usually just stick with GCP for the scalability that I, I need. It scales together with our platform. And it's pretty easy to set up compared to um, other tools like AWS or um, Azure or Microsoft. Uh, so GCP, Google Cloud, it offers serverless functions that I use. And pricing is also pretty affordable if you're bootstrapping. So Spotify uses GCP for their data processing because it can handle tons of data, uh, real-time data without crashing. So I worked on projects where the user's traffic spiked overnight and uh, GCP just handled it without any hiccups. Uh, plus, it's easy to integrate with the rest of my stack, whether that's for storage, AI processing, or just um, hosting the app. Everything is just conveniently there. It's just really fast, right? So now there's something that a lot of people will overlook, which is testing and monitoring. I use Sentry for this. So you need to know when things break, especially in the early days where uh, you don't have a lot of funds to hire testers. And, you know, when you have users who complain to you that your apps break, I think apps breaking is just a very common thing in software development, yeah, especially in the early days, right? So whenever it breaks, the most annoying part is that the user telling you it breaks, but not giving you the data you need to understand the error messages or why it breaks, for example. And no one is going to be so nice to suddenly sit down with you and send you a screenshot and give you the error console and, and for you to fix the problem. So yeah, and that's the most annoying part that I, I, I realized in monitoring for bugs and understanding these issues. So Sentry really helps you track all of the errors that you face in real time and this allows you to fix the issues immediately, maybe even before your users notice them, right? It's not just for big companies. They have, you know, small projects can, can benefit from this. I, I use Sentry, the free, oil, the free version in pretty much all of our software projects today. And it's been really, really helpful. Even big companies like Disney Plus, they use Sentry for error tracking. So this has been really helpful. And if you are considering launching a startup in production, definitely I would recommend Sentry. So yeah, that's the slide, right? React, Next, Express, Superbase, Asura, Sentry. This is what I use for um, all of my software projects today. I don't even think twice because I can ship so damn fast with this. And uh, my team of developers, as well as uh, my coding school, Sigma school, we use this exact tech stack to teach our students, help them land jobs, and also close seven to eight figure software projects. So if it's good enough for seven figure software projects, it's probably good enough for uh, whatever project you're thinking of. Okay, so this stack doesn't have to look flashy. It's about being effective. It's about being able to ship faster than everyone else, right? If you want to put something that can grow with you, handle a lot of traffic, easy to maintain, easy to learn, easy to set up, and then I think this stack is good. It has never let me down once. Once you get the hang of it, you will be able to ship really fast. Uh, so yeah, whether it's a small platform or a big app that you want to scale to millions of users, this is a good starting place to go. All right, so if you enjoyed this, let me know your thoughts. Um, I hope it helps and see ya.